derivatives of sine x and cos x, uh, this is a, a, a graphing technique. It's not a rigorous proof, um, but it's a, quite a, a good way to introduce the derivatives. You'll see what I've drawn there is this, the sine curve, just to refresh your memory. On, um, I had you draw the sine curve. Here we have the, the, the sine of naught is naught. Sine of 9 degrees or pi upon 2 is 1. That's 1. Sine of 180 degrees is 0. Sine of 270 is minus 1. And the sine of 360 or 2 pi is 0. Right. And I've drawn that, that curve through there. Right now, at this point here, just got to accept this little, little fact. At this point here, the gradient, gradient is 1. Okay. So m equals 1, which means dy dx equals 1. So we're transferring it down to this dy dx axis. So it's 1 there. Now here you can see that the gradient is flat. It's 0. That's the maximum value. So that's gradient of 0. m equals 0. So we bring it down there. There it is at 0 there. Now at this point here, because of the symmetry of the thing, you can see this gradient here, if m was 1, this would be negative 1. So negative 1 would appear down here. And then here, of course, the gradient is 0. So it's 0 down here. And back up here again, we can see the gradient. Again, because of the symmetry of the thing, m would be equal to 1. So we're going back here to 1. Now, I'm not very good at drawing this because it's, it's a bit hard with the, the pad, but I'll give this a go. A bit more time with the blue one. So we just, just we draw this curve down here. It's too bad there. Round we go like that. And up we go. And we finally get up to here. And that is the cos curve. So if y equals the sine of x, then dy dx must be equal to the cos of x. As I must say, it's not a rigorous proof. If you want to see a rigorous proof, have a look at my other video. But that's, that's a lot more and a lot more involved. Okay, now I'll do the other one, that is the derivative of the cos of x. Okay, now here's the cos curve. We just did that before. Just refreshing your memory. The cos of naught is 1. The cos of 90 is 0. The cos of 180 or pi is minus 1. The cos of 270 is 0. And the cos of 360 is 1. Okay, same sort of thing, but a slightly different outcome. Okay, so here we can see that the gradient here is, is, is 0. We got 0 there. So it'll be a, a 0 here. Okay, this point here, we can see we've got a gradient there of negative 1 equals negative 1. You might have thought it's going to go up there. No, it's going to go down here. Right. Now here, we've got a gradient of 0. So that's it down here. The y dx is going to be down here at 0. The y dx, remember, is the gradient, gradient function. Okay, so we've got that one. And then this one here, by symmetry, has got to be positive 1. So that'll be sitting up here. Where are we? There. Yep. Just line that one up. Yep. And up here, of course, we've got a gradient of 0. And we're down there. So I'll just draw this curve up. And what do you think this is? Drawing up there. Very hard with this pad, sorry. There we go up there. Okay. There we got it. Now, we know, I'll just draw the, another colour here. We know that the sine curve... Actually, it's better doing a dot, isn't it? A dot, there we go there. Around like that. Now, that's your sine curve. That's y equals the sine of x. What we've drawn is the sine curve reflected about the x-axis. 
So that is y or dy dx equals minus sine x. So if y equals cos x, then its derivative is minus sine x. That might help you because one of the biggest mistakes people make is when they differentiate cos, they write positive sign, not negative sign, and that causes many, many problems. Okay, so that is the graphing technique. I must stress, though, it is not rigorous, that it's not a bad um, start to these derivatives. If you want a more thorough and rigorous um, method, you should look at the, um, the other video I've done on the derivative of sine. Okay, well, thank you for watching.